guys, welcome to the first day of your second semester. And today we're going to start off the class by talking about conjugations are a big part of our curriculum, but as well as communication. So we're going to be talking about the past, the present, and the future tenses and how this helps us. Okay, so as we know, our first form of the conjugation is going to be the past tense, and we're going to go ahead and talk about it in um, our first. I'm not late, see? I'm not late. Alden? Alden? <sighs> Every year. It's a dawn of a new day. A centennial blue sky. What's up, Centennial? I'm Carly. Welcome to our first episode of The Loft. Welcome to The Loft. Season three of The Loft. The first episode of The Loft. Season five of The Loft. Season six of The Loft. Enjoy season seven, episode one of The Loft. Welcome to your first episode of The Loft of this school year. My name is Coach Barksdale. I teach uh, CTI, Career Tech Instruction, and I'm also the head boys basketball coach. I've been a coach and a teacher at Centennial for six years. I love the relationships I've been able to develop with students here. Just watching students learn and grow and navigate high school and then you know, watching them succeed in life after high school, I think is the most fulfilling thing. My playlist is interesting because I, broad spectrum country, hip-hop, rap, a little bit of everything. So I don't know if I have a specific one, um, but I, I listen to a lot of different things. So I grew up in this community. Uh, I went to high school here. It was always kind of a dream of mine to come back and take over the basketball program and teach here. Pre-game superstition. I drink a Celsius before every game. Get you hyped up. Favorite snack before game. I am strange. I don't like to eat before games. I don't like the feeling of coaching while I'm full. So typically, I won't eat before a game. I'll get home after the game, and I'll eat like a whole frozen pizza or something. Jackson. Jackson. 
Are you okay? What's wrong with you? I don't know what's gone into me. Not quite my tempo. I remember it like it was yesterday. February 5th, 6th period, AKA test day, best day. But in my case, it was sad day, bad day. On my unit five industrialization test, the 50 questions after the DBQ, I got a 60. And it's not my fault, it's his fault. So I heard one of my students was uh, I guess disappointed with her test grade and you know, was it Jesse? The typical. The unit took place from the start of second semester all the way up until February 5th. Unit 5 industrialization. That's all I remember. I was up studying all night the night before and I probably learned more from Heimler's history in two hours than I did the entire semester. I've heard that, you know, I apparently didn't teach everything that was on the test or that there wasn't enough time or I guess all the, all the usual complaints, but you know, I do what any good teacher does. I have our curriculum laid out. I follow the AP exam exactly. Um, I even give them a calendar day after day, right? What do we do? What do you need to know? You'd think that what would be on the test would be everything you learned in class. That was not the case. The test was 50 questions in 50 minutes. How is that even possible? Like, how are you supposed to do that? And for the timing on the test, one minute per question, it's tough, I know, but I'm just trying to prepare them for the AP exam. It's just what they need to do later, I'm trying to get them to do now, that's all it is. <sighs> he hates me. I don't know what it is, he hates me so much. He's always attacking me. What, what else did she say? I'm attacking her? She was on TikTok for 30 minutes the other day. I asked her to put it down. I mean, I get that history isn't for everyone, right? But during sixth period, if you're spending all of your time looking at Lord knows what on your phone, I feel like grounds for complaints, you don't quite have the high ground there. He always makes me sign a sheet whenever he sees my phone, even if it's just on my desk. One more strike and he's gonna call my mom. So I know phone use has been a, uh, again, another complaint this year. Uh, I noticed it's been a lot worse than normal, so I kind of implemented a system. I'm just following the school policy. So when I see a phone, when we're in a red zone, I have students go ahead and, you know, sign their name on the wall, like just marking that, yes, I was on my phone. And they get three strikes before I even do anything about it. Right, on the fourth strike, I'll mention it to their parents, but that's it. That's just following school policy. Again, if we're not on our phone 24-7, it's not an issue. He doesn't like me, and he always gets mad at me for leaving class early, but I'm really just anticipating the bell. You know, the policy early is on time, on time is late. Late is unacceptable. One time she got up at 3.02 and tried to crawl out the back door while I was lecturing. So he has this new policy, or I guess he had it since the beginning of the year, but it's the food strikes. Makes no sense. Does he want us to starve? It's sixth period and I'm hungry, and I want to eat my food. And then there's still crumbs left from fourth period. Like, what are we supposed to do about that? I don't even teach during fourth period. He always says things like, this grade doesn't matter. He pulls a Mr. Manny and says, these grades don't define you. What? Yeah, they do. I plan on going to a good college, and I'm not going to be able to do that if I have Mr. Hennessy purposely giving me bad grades. Moral of the story, I did not fail that test. He set me up.
Hey Knights, here's some upcoming college visits. On the 22nd is Reinhardt, on March 4th is Dalton State, and on March 7th is Kennesaw State. If you want to check these out, get a pass from the counselor's office. Hey Centennial, your Sadie Hawkins dance will be pushed back until further notice. Keep in mind you still have a pep rally during sixth period today, so keep an eye out for that. Hey Centennial, today we have a girls basketball game at 5.30 and a boys basketball game at 7.30. Be there to support your nights. Your number of the week is 29 for the 29 days of black history. Good morning, I'm your host Kay. And I'm Kay, and welcome. Actually, can I do it this week? Cause you did it last week. And welcome to your weekly update. Taylor Swift announced a new album, The Tortured Poets Department, and won Album of the Year, while also inviting Lana Del Rey, a nominee, on stage with her. Speaking of the Grammys, rapper Killer Mike was arrested after he won three Grammys at the pre-show awards. I mean, how do you get arrested at the Grammys? At least he got to take home three Ws. Yeah, you know who didn't get to take home any awards? Who? Oh. Later last week, UMG removed their music after an expired contract off of TikTok, leaving many creators without music from artists such as Taylor Swift, Drake, Conan Gray, and Ariana Grande. We will now show a video clip of a TikToker who was affected by this terrible ban, but we must warn you, this clip may be disturbing to some. Wow. Um, Poor guy. I feel for him. Well, in other news, a man severely assaulted a person outside of a Kroger in Fulton County and was later found in a, in a rest in Ohio? Wait, how did he get to Ohio? Is this correct? Probably. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, Maybe he was caught hours later? No, but Ohio is like 10 hours away. 
Anyways, on this week's Centennial News, there's a pep rally on Friday, six period. And there's also gonna be a basketball game on Friday too, so come out and support your Knights. And that's it for your weekly update this week. Thank you and good morning. I'm not you stealing my line. Your color of the week is yellow. Valentine's Day, I think it's kind of underrated. I met like my girlfriend on Valentine's Day and I know people that really enjoy Valentine's Day. I feel like Valentine's Day is kind of overrated. I mean, then again, I'm single, so I feel like that helps. Valentine's Day, underrated. I feel like it should have more appreciation to it. Giving flowers? I think that's underrated too. Like some people really enjoy flowers. Like even if you don't really have the money to afford them, just buy some fake flowers. Overrated. They cost a lot of money. I think that's perfectly rated, actually. Sometimes it's a good gesture and it's nice. Overrated. Too many parents watch it and I never really understood it. I feel like it's rated fairly. It's a lot of fun to watch. I mean, unless you don't have a team that, that you're rooting for. I think because the Super Bowl is underrated. It is just a fun time and you can just hang out with your friends, watch a good game, eat some good food. The Grammys, overrated. I think it's kind of a dead tradition now. When was the last time we had an enjoyable Grammy? Like, let's be for real. I think the Grammys is overrated. People just getting awards for doing their job? Mm, nah. I feel like the Grammys are kind of overrated. It just, it, it's just not very fun to watch, especially if the artist you like isn't picked. Underrated. I feel like more people should watch it so they can know what's going on. Diet Coke, I think overrated at this point, but no one really drinks Diet Coke in the first place. So, I mean... I think Diet Coke is overrated. I'm a Pepsi fan myself, so. I, I feel like Diet Coke is underrated because like, it's very similar to Coke. It's just a bit weirder to taste. Nerd gummy clusters? Uh, I haven't tasted them. I feel like nerd gummy clusters are kind of fairly rated. They're basically just nerds on a gummy rope. They're fine. Hey, Beekner. How's it going, my dude? Hey. Miss Waldman this time. Miss Waldman? Who's that? How did the hipster burn his tongue? He drank his coffee before it was cool. Uh, so, Barksdale, I um, started uh, saying mucho to all my Hispanic friends. It means a lot to them. I have a joke about chemistry, but I'm worried it won't get a reaction. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, bud, uh, Mr. Uh, Gary, bud, I love going outdoors. It's a lot safer than going out windows. I like telling dad jokes. Sometimes he laughs. Hey, Beekner, I, uh, I told my cat that I was going to teach him English the other day, and he just looked at me and said, me? How? Me meow, meow. Your bird of the week is a yellow hammer. Hello, and welcome back to This Week in History by Lennon and Ella, where we'll be covering the week of February 5th to February 9th. On Monday, February 5th, 1869, the world's largest golden nugget was found by two Cornish miners in the gold fields of Victoria, Australia. On Tuesday, February 6, 1778, the Treaty of Alliance with France was signed, creating a military alliance between the U.S. and France and against Great Britain. On Wednesday, February 7, 1915, the first ever wireless message was sent and received from a moving train to a station. On Thursday, February 8, 1960, the beginning of the Hollywood stars were being built on Hollywood Boulevard. On Friday, February 9, 1971, a devastating M6 earthquake struck the densely populated area of Los Angeles, leaving death and destruction in its path.
Mad Villainy is a collaboration album between rapper MF Doom and producer Mad Lib. This is one of the most critically loved albums of all time, and for good reason. Doom's bars work really well with Mad Lib's certain style of production, and together they just create this inexplicable and amazing vibe. Overall, I would rate this album a 9 out of 10. My favorite song from it is Raid, and I just, I love this because the guitar sample is so good that dun -na, dun -na, dun -dun, dun -na, dun -na, really fits well and it creates this really interesting loop. My least favorite song is probably Accordion because it just sounds really twangy and it doesn't fit well at all. What's up Centennial and welcome back to Flying Facts with Delta Mike. During the COVID-19 pandemic that sent the aviation industry for a loop, Southwest Airlines decided to do a major expansion. They decided not to go down the road that other airlines are doing, such as furloughing staff. Wink wink at these airlines. Instead, they chose to do a major expansion, adding new markets that they have never served before or have served through other airports. For example, Southwest has served the Miami metro area for years, but through Fort Lauderdale and West Palm Beach. However, because of this expansion, they added Miami International Airport. Another good example is the city of Houston. For years, Southwest has served Houston through Houston Hobby Airport, but now have expanded an intercontinental airport. But they also added some new markets, such as Bozeman, Montana. So guys, if you want to go skiing, let's jump on a plane and go to Bozeman, Montana. Bozeman, Montana.